Wow. Hello, y'all. Welcome to the channel. Today, what we're going to do is talk about the HSKIF 13, my three month update on the things that I like about it, the things that I don't like, what I wish that I would have known before I dove headfirst into a purchase without being able to read much of anything concerning this platform right here. Uh, let's face it, the dealer that is here in the U.S., which is the sole one that I know of, although Hayari Marine has put out that there is going to be a Texas one here soon, if not already. Um, so when you look up the websites, they do little to no justice whatsoever in telling you how much one of these is going to cost. That's your number one question if you're interested in this platform right here and uh, I just always referred like hey call the dealer up call the dealer up let them know what it is that you want and you essentially have to do what I did you contact the dealer and they will send you a brochure that itemizes all the um, individual bells and whistles that you can have added to the platform and as you add each one it's gonna skyrocket the price let's face it these things aren't cheap I paid 13000 and some change for mine, darn near $14,000. After the add-ons that I did myself personally, it's well over fourteen grand that I have invested in this platform. But had I been able to do it all over again, I probably would have did it a bit different. It's not to say that I don't enjoy this platform. I just think that it lacks performance and you end up having to do a lot more to it in order to get the performance that you truly want out of something that is going to be considered a skiff, especially a polling skiff. So I don't think they categorize it as a polling skiff and it's good that they don't because it fails miserably at, be, at trying to be push pulled back there on that polling platform. which. I call a casting platform. So I'm gonna uh, turn over towards the GoPro, we'll put that hat on, and I'll just briefly walk through, let you know the things that, uh, as I said, I like, I don't like, and uh, yeah, I hope y'all will be entertained. Okay, y'all, let's talk about everything that I don't like first, and I'm gonna try to run through it really fast. So we got up here, the bow cleat. You can see that I've already had issues with this, three months old, and the original bow cleat that came with it was inferior to this one right here, but the original one was a little bit wider, so the footprint was able to cover that up. And then with the 5200 down below, there was no gap. Now it's exposed. Hayari Marine sent this to the dealer, and then the dealer sent it to me. I installed it. It looks horrible. I mean, to me, it looks horrible. You're not going to be able to see it because if you're not on it, you don't know what to look at. But this is a more beefier cleat. I love that. I don't love the fact that I have now an exposed hole. And if I want to fix that, it's going to always be there. But I have to throw 5200 in there. So I'm waiting for them to make good on their word and send me something. But it's like snail mail. You're waiting forever. So the original bow cleat just popped out whenever we had the dock line on. And we were pulling it onto the trailer to get it close enough to get the uh, winch hooked onto the stainless steel D-ring down there. And so that was a nuisance right there. That's one thing that I didn't like, that they just should have used the more beefier uh, cleat instead of something that was inferior. So that's number one. The second thing, the, uh, the motor. It hangs down way too far. If you take a look behind, uh, like below the cavitation plate, this right here extends close to 11, yeah, 11 inches. So the cavitation plate is on line with the keel, but whenever you get in the water, the keel goes down a little bit. It goes darn near to right here. I'm gonna consider this the water line. It goes up right there. So essentially, the cavitation plate is underwater too, and we're right about there. And from the keel of the skiff to like what hangs down below the uh, water line, it is just way too much. So when I get to 0.9 feet uh, depth reading on the hummingbird, I'm already starting to, you know, turn my pants brown because at any moment I can run into an oyster bar, a reef, something. I can run aground and if y'all see my prop, that's basically what happened. So 
it's a no-no. I don't care which outboard you're gonna use unless you can trim it up at a moment's notice or better yet, use a jack plate, but we can't do that because hey Ari, I talked to them guys, messaged back and forth on Instagram and they said, uh, the, the one that I wanna use will push your outboard out four inches, it's on the fly jack plates. So it comes out four inches, it's also like 27 pounds or 24, somewhere around there. So all that additional weight that extends the motor out, plus it weighs back the uh, platform itself. They said, hey Ari said that if you put it on there, your skiff is gonna porpoise, meaning the bow is gonna come up because the additional weight is extended further back. It's more leverage to push down over here. He said, give me a chance, uh, we'll get one and we'll see how we can modify it to work with this and if it's gonna give you any issues or anything like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm patiently waiting. If not, if they don't get back with me, I'm just gonna purchase one and if the performance messes up, guess what, that's a hard lesson learned. But best believe, I'm gonna report this back to y'all so that you don't make any mistakes that I've already made thus far. Um, so that's the biggest thing. I've already had three strikes to the lower unit. The prop is the one being that it's aluminum, has taken the brunt of the damage, and I would rather the prop give way than something in the lower unit like the shafts and gearing and stuff like that really get jacked up. So I probably will buy another aluminum prop. But it could all be solved if we had a jack plate back here and not worrying about porpoising. So that is one thing. Uh, a Mercury. I opted to go with the brand new 2020 and it's a 20 horsepower. This thing, the way the tiller is designed and the trim locks or trim tabs, whatever you call these down here, whenever you try to trim it up, it's manual. Uh, they're not in the idea position to where you can raise, that's as high as I can go. Like literally, this is as high as I can go because of the way it's designed. And because this casting platform is right here, my tiller hits it when I try to bring it up. So if Heyari would maybe do like an, a cut and get rid of the, the logo or make the logo smaller, then that cutout right there would allow for your tiller to not have to come all the way to port side or starboard over here. I got it to the starboard side because that's the only way I can lift it out of the water if I get into some skinny mud. Um, I have to change the yaw on the tiller, so that's a, a pain in the butt. And uh, the platform itself, don't get it if you're in Texas, unless you really want to be able to get 18 inches of height off of the deck back here. This is about 18 inches of added height that you can get. Don't get it, it's, you, it's not a polling platform. This cannot be considered a polling skiff. Anybody that says it is, I will call them a liar to their face because it does not track straight at all. When you're out there, if the wind is blowing or the current is moving and you gotta go against it or broadside to it, you're gonna fight it. If you're trying to pull the way a traditional polling skiff is, back here, you're gonna fight the, the skiff itself trying to get it to go where you want it to go. It's not designed to go straight at all. So bad hole design to consider it a polling skiff. To Heyari's credit, I don't think they do like claim that it's a technical polling skiff. So thank God that they don't. Um, other, aside of that, if you're up here at the bow with the stiffy push pole that I purchased, I think I just did it for nothing, but I only that's the reason why I only take one half of the pole with me now because there's just no need to take it and have it back there. It's pointless. But if you're up here at the bow with only one angler on board, then you can essentially on each side do the way you uh, normally would pull around in a kayak. You can do that from up here, no problems whatsoever. So, I mean, that's the only way that I would consider it a pulling skiff, but then you're pulling it the way you would a kayak, which is completely different from what I've seen technical pulling skiffs do on YouTube. So it is not a pulling skiff. Um, what else have I learned? It's a two-person skiff, and it can take two people out there. However, 
with your weight capacity being at around 450 pounds, we push that limit. So what I had to do was buy these two drain plugs. These are gravity, like self bailing drains for the cockpit. And what happens is when you get underway, the skiff kind of rides up a little bit, the bow does, and it just forces gravity to push the water back here. But what happens is, and what I don't like, and the reason why I had to purchase these stainless uh, plugs is because right here, this flapper valve, it's garbage, brand new, and it lets water. It's not supposed to go in, but because it's so far down, and it doesn't do its job, water comes in and it starts to, even when I'm on it by myself, water comes in and it starts to fill up the cockpit and I could never figure out why. I kept having to run the bilge, you know, and it was just me out there and I knew I wasn't pushing the weight limit. That flapper valve is garbage. So doing that, it increases the weight capacity of this. So my son, myself, my camera gear for YouTube and all my fishing gear, the, 30 pound trolling motor, the seven pound battery that you uh, have with the trolling motor. Uh, I can do all of that now, go out there with no issues. But um, that was a nuisance having to learn that the hard way. And the reason why water gets down below into the hull is because there's no seal around the center console at all. So there's a hole for the gas line to go in and uh, that's just a nuisance that it's not sealed. It would help me out with not having to uh, turn the bilge on consistently. But now we don't have to worry about it because we got that. Now, uh, another thing happens to be with the tiller extension. This is a very expensive option, and the way it came, you cinch these and tighten these down. I thought that you wouldn't have to take it off after each trip, but I quickly learned that when you're on the road traveling, the tiller is vibrating and then eventually it just slides right off. So I've come back here whenever I'm getting ready to launch and this thing just pops right off. So I'm like, wow. The other thing, when the dealer gave it to me, it was in this position right here. And when you lift up the outboard, these right here scraped right into my C deck. And I couldn't figure out for the longest time who the hell stepped on this and like ruined it so yeah that was that so now i basically turn it upside down so it's smooth and it goes right here just a prime example of the outboard the tiller is going to consistently hit this right here and i think that's why heyari put this stainless piece right up here smart on their part but not smart to put the tiller extension with these right here to mass like really gouge and mess up your uh, C deck. All right. Um, <clears throat> the only other thing that I dislike, let's turn on our power to the center console. Check this out. Nav light right there. What's wrong with the picture? Well, for Texas, I don't know about you other states, but for Texas, they're supposed to be up here at the bow. At least I think they're supposed to be at the bow. I don't want to find out the hard way, but yeah, who, <laughs> why are you going to put the nav lights back here and then you got the 360 light right over here that's another like issue that i've got i've only used this thing once and look at that it popped right off it's a piece of crap plastic i spent 13,000 and some change on this thing over 14,000 with the addition of the trolling motor but when you spend that kind of money you expect to get something quality and that wasn't the nav lights being back here is just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> so uh, my last gripe and complaint is because I thought that I was going to be able to push pull this thing and it would track well just like a polling skiff. I mean, it looks like a polling skiff, but that is it. That's where it's, dif it's different, com completely different from a polling skiff because the platform is not, if you pull back there, as I said, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. Let's just get off of that. Anyhow, I had to get the Minn Kota because otherwise I would not be able to fish in this thing. And this was a 48 inch shaft. I cut it down to size. I got a video showing that. It'll be linked in the video description down below. If you want to know how I took it from 48 inches to 30, then you can see that, but it fits just perfect. The issue 
that I really had was when you purchase the Minn Kota um, quick release bracket, it comes with a template so that you can kind of see where you can mount it. This was the best possible spot that I could put um, my Minn Kota because for one, if I wanted it up here, you're gonna cover the bow cleat, which for me was a no-no. I need this so that I can pull her on because I don't drive her onto the trailer. I uh, do all of this by myself most of the time and I need to pull it with the dock line right here and uh, then I can get the winch and pull it on. So I could not cover that up. And even if I wanted to cover it up, the quick release bracket does not fit. There's not enough meat under here for that bracket to grab into and then this the motor would not extend out the shaft basically hits right here when you have enough meat to grab that bracket you could put it sideways is what some of y'all are saying but i ran into the same issue one of those bolts would not have meat to go into so it'd be right here the other one would be right there it's just not gonna go so this is what i came up with it looked just goofy with the head unit way out here because you got to put that additional um, shaft length right here that I cut off and so I cut it it looks better and it just works a lot better so with that being said that's what I dislike about it let's talk about what I absolutely love about this platform the full use of the deck space there's no other platform that's out there that looks as sexy as this platform does that will allow you full use of the deck space. I can fish all the way up here at the bow if I wanted to. It is plenty stable. I can sit down for all day comfort and fish from the center console seat. I can come back here to the casting platform. <coughs> Excuse me. I can come back here to the casting platform, get 18 inches of added height to be able to look and locate those schooling reds. And I'm looking forward to being able to do that this summer. Um, none of the other platforms are going to allow you the use of a 20 horsepower outboard. So commute time from the ramp to some of these marsh systems, sky's the limit now and I will get there lickety split too because that 20 horse outboard gets her going with two people. We're achieving 22 miles an hour. Maybe I'll go a little bit faster by one or two miles an hour as soon as I get a new prop because that one's been mangled because it's just too far down without a jack plate but uh <clears throat> 23 was the fastest that i clocked it when it was brand new and before i struck some oyster and mangled the prop 22 is what i'm getting now 21 to 22 for two people for one person i was getting 25 now i'm getting 23 so you're gonna get there like lightning fast um you can go from the bow to the rear really easy uh, if if you have good balance I'm just gonna say that because when you're standing right here on the gunnels you have to lean to put your uh, chest and center of gravity over the center line where the keel would be and uh, you can go back and forth so that is awesome and it will carry two people you can fish two people but is it gonna be the most comfortable probably not so uh, if you're buying it for one person, then you are going to absolutely love this platform. The other thing, it's got an in, like, uh, in-hole fuel tank, six gallons. That was an absolute plus for me because I didn't want to waste my underneath the casting platform space. If I want to throw like a loadout box or something like that for a catch and cook or an ice chest, a fish bag, all of that stuff can go under there. And I don't have fuel, like having to take a fuel tank, fill up my outboard or run a fuel line into my fuel tank. It's just an eyesore to see those red fuel tanks there. Even if you spray paint it, that's just an eyesore. So the inboard fuel tank is a plus. It is awesome. And uh, you got a live well. Some of the other smaller platforms around 13 inches, you know, the competitors to this. <clears throat> I don't know if they have live wells. I think the Solo Skiff does, but this one is a fully functional one. And uh, I mean, I guess the Solo would be fully functional too, but it is really nice. I use it as a dry box because I rarely ever fish live bait. 
Ah, uh, what else is there that I absolutely love about this platform and what drove me to spend $14,000? I think that's pretty much it. I guess looks matter, huh? Whenever you're out there, you want to make sure people see you, especially if you're a YouTuber. <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. Uh, that's the vanity in me, I guess. Um, no, but that's it right there. The HSKIF 13, is it for you? I don't know, y'all will decide that. I've gone through the growing pains already. I figured out how to manipulate her to like beat her down and submit to what I want her to do. And then she's done the same to me. I know what I can push her to do and what I can't. And whenever you figure out what she can't do, you learn really quick because it hurts when you spend that much money and you end up with gouges. You end up with the C deck coming off. You end up with your trolling motor running aground and because it's hollow between the top of the fiberglass to the inside of the hole, the fiberglass that's there, it will crack. You can't really cinch these bolts down because of the hollowness and there's just foam in between that's another thing that i love about it you could cut the darn thing in half you can run it aground you can get a gaping hole she is filled with foam through and through so she will not sink even if you flipped it over just like a kayak she will not sink so that's a plus in my book so yeah that's it everyone that is my three month update with the h skiff and i'm pretty sure i've still got a lot more to learn on how i can make her perform better out there on the water but uh, as it comes and what I have learned thus far is what I have presented y'all with. So if it's something that you're going to look into, highly recommend talking to the dealer about like packages that they may offer because as it stands right now, it was all a la carte. Did you want this? This is how much it's going to cost. So yes, uh, after everything and it's all said and done, trailer, motor, the trolling motor, everything that you saw on it, it's a little over $14,000 that I spent. And I already hear it. Um, you could have bought this, you could have bought that. Yeah, I mean, I could have, but I didn't. This is what I wanted. And uh, did it meet my expectations? No, it fell way short of it. And it's still way short of it because she's not a true marsh monster. She's not a true shallow water machine because I can't even get in eight inches of water, um, my prop is just going to run aground. So until we get a jack plate, then maybe I can consider her a true marsh monster, but it's just absurd whenever full size skiffs, we're talking 26 footers, can get through marsh water that this little tiny thing cannot get through. I think it's absurd, but I mean, neither here nor there. I'm living with the choice that I made and figuring out how I can get her to perform to the best of my ability because let's face it, I'm not gonna sell it. Nobody's gonna buy it for that amount of money when you find out that it cannot perform. So hopefully Hayari takes into consideration if they wanna sell in the Texas market that you're gonna have to step up the game and create a true Texas edition skiff. Throw a jack plate on it, move the fuel tank forward so that the skiff does not porpoise and figure out some way to redesign the hull so that you can actually track straight whenever you're back there on that casting platform because I refuse to call it a polling platform, but that is it. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something and I hope I better informed you to make a much better decision before actually spending your hard-earned cash on something this expensive. That's it. I will see y'all next time when we're off the water.